Hello and welcome to a video tutorial. I'm uh, Mr. Tafadar and today I'm going to show you how to expand single brackets and collect like terms. Um, now this lesson is for the year eight and if you're using the math checkpoints book two then you can work from page 85 exercise 9.1. All right, the first thing I'm going to do before we get started is look at the keyword like terms. So I'm talking about what does like terms mean? Well, what you can do is think about um, some apples and some mice in that case. And um, what we can do is see that here I've got three apples and here I've got three mice. And here I've got another apple. And the question that I want to ask myself is, which one can I add together? Because I'm trying to do the sum of all of that. And it's quite clear that I can only add the apples together because they're the same thing. And this is what I mean by like terms. Like terms is basically when I can add things that are the same. So in our case, I'm going to have three apples plus another apple. So that gives me four apples. And I still have the three mice left, so I can just say that I've got plus another three mice. And um, the next question I should ask myself is whether I can add the apples and the mice together. And clearly, we cannot because they're not the same thing. So this is the idea that I want you to get used to when I'm talking about like terms. So now let's move over to a question where um, we have to collect like terms. Now let's say for instance we had an example like three A plus four A take away two A. Here I'm going to refer to A as the apples, but I've just shortened the word into A. What I can do is ask myself how many apples I have in total. Now we can see that I've got three apples here, I've got four apples here, and then I'm going to take away two apples. When you're collecting like terms, you need to make sure you use bid mass and you follow the rule of bid mass when you're adding. I'm going to come into this um, a bit later on, so don't worry too much if you don't understand what I mean by now. So, if I look at bid mass, addition comes before subtractions. So, I'm going to do these two operations first. So, 3a plus 4a gives me 7a. And then I'm going to take away the 2a which is left over. And that gives me 7a take away 2a is equal to 5a. Alright, let's move over to another example where we have more terms. So I'm going to have something like 4a plus 3a plus 6b plus 7b. So again, I'm going to ask myself which one is the like terms? And clearly we can see the 4a and the 3a can be added together. And I can also see that the 6b and the 7b can be added together. And again, if we follow the rule of bid mass, we have to do additions before anything else. Uh, because in our case, we only have additions here, here, and here. Um, so it doesn't really matter, but it's still important and you recall bid mass every time. So let's go ahead and collect the like terms. 4a plus 3a gives me 7a, and 6b plus 7b gives me 13b. And finally, I need to check whether I can add the 7a and the 13b together. And like I said to you, um, if I had apples and mice, I cannot add them together because they're, the, they're not the same thing. And here is the same, same thing. 
I've got seven apples and let's say 13 bananas and clearly they're not the same thing so therefore I cannot add them together so this will be my final answer. Alright, two more examples and uh, we should be done. So this will be our example number three. Now in this example, I'm going to introduce some multiplications as well. So let's pretend we have something like 3a plus 4a times 5 take away 2a. And again we're going to refer to bin mass to know which operation we are going to carry out first. Now, BIDMUS stands for brackets, indices, divisions, multiplication, addition and subtraction, if you didn't know that. Um, and we can see that multiplications come before additions, because in our case here, we have some additions, some multiplications, and some subtractions. So which one do I do first? And clearly I'm going to do the multiplication first. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And everything else, I'm going to keep it the same. So the 3a, I'm going to keep it the same. The minus 2b, I'm going to keep it the same. And I'm going to go ahead and work out what 4a times 5 is equal to. The first thing I need to do is multiply the numbers. 4 times 5 is equal to 20. So I'm going to write plus 20. And the plus comes from here. And once I've multiplied the numbers, I'm going to multiply with the letters. So in our case, here we have just an A, so I'm going to write an A here. My next step will be to collect the like terms, just like we've done it in example 1 and 2. So here we've got the 3A, the 20A, and the minus 2A. They're all the same, they're all like terms. So I'm going to go ahead and <coughs> Do the addition first because it comes before the subtractions. So 3a plus 20a gives me 23a. And I'm going to take away the 2a which is left. And finally, I can write down 23a take away 2a is equal to 21a. And there's my answer. All right, and one last example. Here, we're going to have a bracket before we can collect like terms. And I'm going to show you how to expand the single bracket and collect like terms. So here we go. 3p plus 5 brackets. 4p take away 6 inside the bracket. Take away 7p. Okay, again, let's refer back to bid mass. So we know bit mass stands for brackets, the i stands for indices or powers, divisions, multiplications, additions, and subtractions. So do we have any brackets here? And clearly we can see that there are some brackets. So whenever you have a situation where you have brackets, then you need to make sure you deal with that bracket first. And you also need to be aware that you have to look at the number which is in front of that bracket because this number needs to be multiplied with what we have inside and this is how we expand brackets so let me show you how this is done 3p and the minus 7p we're not going to touch them yet because we have to deal with the brackets so let's just rewrite them as 3p at the front and the minus 7p at the back and let's leave the bracket now so this 5 here needs to be multiplied with the terms inside one by one. So I'm going to do plus 5 times 4p. 5 times 4 is equal to 20, so I'm going to write a 20 here. And I'm also going to multiply with the p, so that becomes 20p. Next, inside that bracket, I've got a minus. So here, I'm going to put a minus. Now, the rule I've used here is very simple. You can see that here I've got a plus and a minus. And if you've got two different signs, then it's always a minus. When you have two different signs, it's always a minus. So I'm going to do 5 times 6 now, which is equal to 30. Okay, next step. We are going to collect the like terms. So I'm going to see 
which one I can add together. So here I've got the 3P, here I've got the 20P, and right at the back I've got the 7P, which is like term. And be careful when you're looking at your like terms and um, the signs that you have in front of them. Here we have the 7P, but there's a minus in front, and you have to be very careful when you do that. So 3P plus 20P is equal to 23P, and 23P take away 7P. How much is that equal to? Well, that's going to equal to 16P. Oops. I've got 16P here, and I'm left with a minus 30, so I'm going to bring this down. And finally, uh, I'm going to ask myself, can I simplify this even further? Can I collect more like terms? And in our case, here I've got 16p, and here I've got minus 30, and we can see that they're not the same, because that one's got a p, this one doesn't, so therefore I cannot add them together, and therefore this is my final answer. Alright, I just want to show you one more example. I did say that there's going to be four, but I'm going to throw in one more example. So this will be our example number five, so that way um, you can make sure that you understand how to um, collect like terms and expand single brackets. And uh, example number five, instead of having just one bracket, I'm going to have two brackets and I'm going to have negative numbers as well. So let's take a look. Um, minus four, bracket seven, plus six G, take away seven, bracket minus 8g plus 1. Okay, again, let's refer back to Bidmas and figure out which operation we are going to do first. So, in our case, we're going to ask ourselves whether we have any brackets, and clearly we have two here, this one there, and this one here. So we need to expand the bracket first using the number which is in front of the bracket with the terms inside the bracket. So the minus 7 is going to be multiplied with the minus 8g and it's going to be multiplied by the plus 1. So we have to multiply them. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, what you need to be careful about this example is that we have negative numbers. And uh, let me just write down uh, the rules when you're multiplying negative numbers. If you've got a minus number and you multiply by a plus number, because the signs are different, the answer is going to be a minus. If you have a plus number and you multiply by a negative number, then the answer is still going to be negative because we have two different signs. Next, if you've got two signs that are the same, so let's say you had a minus and a minus, then it becomes a plus, and if you have a plus and a plus, then it stays a plus. Okay, so try to remember those rules when you are multiplying negative numbers. So, let's go ahead and try to multiply this out. A minus 4 times 7, that's going to become minus 28, because this is a negative number, the minus 4, and the 7 is a positive number, and we can see from our rule here, that a minus a minus and a plus makes a minus, so that's why I have a minus 28. Next, I'm going to do minus 4 times plus 6g. A minus and a plus makes a minus. And 4 times 6 is equal to 24. And then I'm multiplying with the g, so I get minus 24g. So I've dealt with the first bracket. Let's move on to the second bracket. So here we have minus 7 times minus 8g. A minus and a minus makes a plus. 7 times 8. How much is 7 times 8? 7 times 8 is equal to 56g. And I'm going to do minus 7 times plus 1, and minus and a plus makes a minus, and 7 times 1 is equal to 7. 
Okay, so now we are in a position where we can collect our life terms, just like we've done in example 1, 2, 3 and 4. And I'm going to highlight the ones that I can add together. So here I've got minus 24g, and like I said to you, always be wary about the sign which is in front, and in our case we have a minus here. And here we've got a plus 56g, because I can add them together because they're like terms. And the other two that we have is the minus 28 and the minus 1. And um, let's do a bit of sums here. Minus 28 minus 1 is equal to minus 29. And minus 24 plus 56. So minus 24 plus 56 is equal to plus 32g. If you don't know how I got the plus 32g, you have to go and learn about adding and subtracting negative numbers. And I cannot go through that in that lesson because it's just going to overlap with our learning objectives. All right, and this is my answer. Right, so I hope that I've really helped. And uh, if you have access to my IMAPS, uh, what you can do is just uh, log in into the, the site and what I want you to do is click on um, Algebra and you can go to Algebraic Manipulation and you can look into Single Brackets and you can practice the online homework by clicking here or you can press the lesson if you want to revise that again and I strongly advise that you try the online homework um, because it will test whether you know how to do this topic properly. Now, what you're going to do is um, enter your login and password and uh, if you're in my class, then everyone should have one. So make sure you enter your login and password and try some of the questions out. Um, okay, I'll uh, catch you later in another video tutorial. Bye-bye.